Hi guys, obviously here to preview tomorrow's <coughs> uh, Europa League tie against Karabakh. No embargo, please use the microphone provided and we'll try and get through as many questions as you tell me how. Michael. Thanks, Andy. You all right, Ange? I'm good, bud. Um, how are we looking, team, team news? We're uh, looking... Um, not me, not me. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, we're, we're, we're looking at good. Uh, OK, um, so uh, nothing uh, sort of from the weekend uh, in terms of uh, injuries. Everyone sort of pulled up really well and uh, no issues there. And um, obviously, apart from the injuries, the obvious absences are Romero uh, and Spence and Reggion who are training today, but obviously for different reasons are ineligible. It was rare for Spurs last season. You obviously joined the club with them, not in Europe. How much are you looking forward to? Spurs have a real good, big relationship with European football. We won this competition twice. Yeah, no, I, you know, really sort of pleased to be back there, excited about being back in it. Um, I, I spoke about it last year that, it, you know, it was a real gap in our sort of calendar and I think didn't help us at certain times of the year not having that sort of regular football and that challenge of, you know, playing against different types of opposition and sort of you know, exposing our whole squad to some, you know, real meaningful game time. So for a number of reasons, and, and you know, I, I, the worst thing was sitting around watching other teams play in it. That, that didn't sit well with me either. So um, being back in European competition is important. I know you have touched on it, but Son was really passionate then. I know you mentioned it in the fans forum, but it is an expanded competition. Son particularly mentioned about the player welfare and maybe the dip in quality. Do you, do you echo what Son and, the, and other players, Rodri Allison, have been saying about this extended format of these competitions? Well, not, not specifically to this competition, but you know, I've spoken already about the fact that I think we're getting to a real sort of dangerous level of what our expectations are around players. And, and, you know, instead of sort of focusing on one or two tournaments, it's about the calendar, you know, that's more of an issue. Players don't get a break between seasons anymore than they used to. Uh, there's more tournaments, both at international and, and, and at club level, at continental level. So, you know, like I said, it's going to get to a point where, you know, we're not going to have the best players out there playing and more, probably even worse, is, you know, them breaking down for various reasons. So um, it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. On that, Ange, you said last night that players will take matters into their own hands if things don't change. I mean, what does that look like? Is, is that a strike? I, I, no, I, I, I said players may take that. I didn't say they will. I said they may take play, uh, matters into their own hands. And it's 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 about as, I guess, um, you know, they're, they're the ones most affected, to be honest. So, you know, you, you, you'd understand if, if they start, you know, as a collective thinking about, well, how much of this are we going to sort of continually, um, you know, not have a say in. And uh, it's like anything else in life, I guess, you know, if, if you're affected and it is the players that are affected. Um, you know, we have a responsibility as clubs, as managers as well, to make sure that we protect our players from that as well. So it's a reason we have squads. So, you know, we've got to be mindful of we can't on the one hand sort of bemoan the fact that you know, we, we have so many games, but we want to be in all competitions. And at the same time, we don't use our squads because I think, um, you know, we end up being complicit in that. Can I ask you a tactical question? We saw Arsenal come here and win without the ball, or well, 36% possession, I think it was, and then do a kind of extreme version of that in the second half against Man City, albeit with 10 men. I guess 10, 15 years ago, there used to be more managers who were kind of winning big things without having the ball. That's changed. Um, it now feels like you have to have possession to win. Could, could do you think we could go back to a time where fo you know football kind of goes in a cycle towards a, an approach where you don't need to have the ball to to kind of be competing at the very highest level? Um, I think football's always going in the, going in those cycles. I mean, I think there's always been sort of dominant teams who are more sort of you know possession heavy and, and other times where, where, you know, it's been teams that, you know, as you said, um, require less of the ball. I think in football there's always that kind of counterbalance of, um, you know, what, what's, um, what can be successful in any given time. A lot of that comes down to, I think, you know, the strength of, of teams that execute that. You know, if, if you know, you get sort of the best teams who have a period of domination playing a certain way, it invariably means that others try and sort of follow that method and if it's the flip side, then it goes the other way. So I've always felt there's always been, you know, a, a kind of cycle that the football kind of goes through um, where, 
you know, certain kind of, you know, tactical play, um, you know, ends up dominating for a period of time till somebody comes along and comes up with something different and then sort of changes things. Yeah, people seem to be congratulating Arsenal on not having a soft underbelly and developing their, their way of playing with the dark arts. I was at Mikel Arteta's press conference yesterday. Your team played good at entertaining football. You, that's how you're going to win a trophy, be it this season or, or whenever. How come you don't have to use the dark arts in inverted commas? <laughs> you're making it sound as if it's good versus evil, like, you know, <laughs> Batman versus whoever, I don't know. I don't know my superheroes that well. Um, Look, I think it's all part of the game, and it's always existed. It's just, you know, it, 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 and I, I, I've never, look, I've said before, I don't like, I don't like, I don't believe in the dark arts. I don't know how to do it. It's just not in my makeup, but I've seen it be very effective, uh, you know, uh, and a very effective tool. And my kind of thing has always been, well, if teams are going to go down that way, we've got to be even more disciplined to, to, to make sure we don't get distracted by that. And um, because, you know, ultimately, I guess the role of every manager, every team, is to try and, you know, unsettle an opposition one way or another, you know, um, and some do it by, you know, you know, trying to disrupt and 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 sort of um, curtail any sort of momentum from the opposition. Others want the momentum; they want to have the dominance. So it just depends which side of the coin you fall down. But, it, you know. The reason I do what I do is because that's what I, the space I'm comfortable in. I know how to do that. I, I, I you know, for me to, to sort of change my approach um, would mean to me sort of delving into an area that I don't really, uh, you know, I don't really sort of uh, have a lot of emphasis in the way I, I coach or the way I talk. And finally, on this competition, it's changed since you were last in it because it's not home and away anymore. Teams don't drop down from the Champions League anymore. Um, and Spurs among the favourites to win it. How do you see that and how do you see the new competition? Yeah, I think it's it's interesting. Obviously, early stages, um, you know, it's, um, it'll be interesting to see how it develops. I, I think I said before, I, yeah, just a gut feeling that there's probably going to be more in games, um, you know, usually in the group stage after about the second, probably the third game, you kind of knew who was going through, so there may be some dead rubbers in there, but I think all games will be meaningful because all teams will have something to play for and um, and it's not that sort of standard home and away, so you're going to play, you know, eight different teams, eight different styles of football. So, uh, look, it's, it's an interesting challenge. Um, you know, I guess at the end of it, we'll, we'll see whether it's kind of had the effect that uh, everyone wants it to have it by being a little bit more, I guess, exciting and all the way through rather than sort of just a knockout phase. But most important thing for us is we're in it. So because um, we're in it, we, we've got a chance. Uh, Azerbaijani news agency. Uh, you've probably watched Karabakh's recent games. Uh, which player in Azerbaijani champion squad are you more concerned about? Look, um, yeah, we've had we've had a very good look at. Uh, we had somebody uh, fly out there on the weekend, watch them play, and um, you know they're a very good team. They they dominate the local competition, but um, just as importantly, um, in Europe, have always made an impact. Um, you know, we had a good look at their two games against Leverkusen last year. They did very well. They pushed Leverkusen all the way. And we know what, how dominant Leverkusen were last year. Um, so. You know, it's not so much about the individual threats, it's about understanding that, you know, um, we've got to make sure we, we, we reach the level of performance we do tomorrow night uh, against a very good, experienced European opponent. I think experience in Europe counts and, and Carabag have been there consistently, uh, whether it's Champions League or, or Europa League and, like I said, have always made an impact, so we've got to be ready for that tomorrow. English press uh, reports that Tottenham will play attacking football towards Garabagh. Uh, is that true, or will you be opting for a more cautious approach? No, well, the English never believe the English press. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't make that mistake. Uh, we'll just play our football. You know, we we, we like to play a certain way, and um, you know, I think uh, Europe gives us another challenge because, as I said. You know, European football, you're meeting teams that probably play a little bit differently and sometimes, obviously tomorrow it's at home, but sometimes in conditions that we, you don't usually face up at two. And uh, I think it'll help us develop as a team by, by facing some different types of opposition. And uh, But ultimately it's about sort of playing our football, uh, being as aggressive as we can with everything we do and uh, hopefully overcoming the challenge that uh, Carabag will have tomorrow. Hi, Ange. Can I say, here. 
Sorry, Matt. Can I just ask about uh, Madison? It seems he's playing in a slightly different role this season, seeing him a bit deeper on Saturday, a bit more out on the left. Can you just sort of talk a little bit about what you're seeing from him that you wanted to get more out of from him and how that kind of fits into the team? Yeah, no, I wouldn't say he's changed his role. He's doing exactly the same as last year. I think if you look back early last year, very similar kind of. And, and I've said all along that the key to, to Matt is, he's, you know, if he's physically good and now he's, you know, getting to that level of where, you know, he's able to cover ground to receive the ball wherever we need him to receive, whether that's deep, wide, but then the ability to really, you know, beat, beat players on the dribble and, and then contribute to attacking play, you know, not just sort of one as you know, one phase of play. He's is getting involved in two, three phases of play and to do that physically it's really important for matters. And like I said, if you look back early last year, you know, he was he was doing very similar things for us that he did on, on the weekend. Uh, it was only when he came back from injury he kind of struggled because I don't think physically he was where he needed to be. He's had a good, strong pre-season and, um, you know, I can just sense every game he's, he's just he's feeling better and better about how he's feeling. And when he does that, I think he's able then to play, you know, in the role we need him to. Last season, obviously, you had that really awful period of injuries. And I remember you saying that you kind of wanted to look into that at the end of the season and to maybe adjust the training a bit or whatever. I just wonder if you kind of have done anything differently this season with this kind of big period now coming up. Yeah, no, we, 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 we're constantly reviewing. We've, we've made changes, obviously, um, both in sports science and, and the medical department. And I think we've, you know, again, we've, we've kind of evolved the squad to get players who we believe are, are going to be robust enough to, to play our kind of football. And, um, and, you know, and part of that process, as I said, is the ability to, to then rotate and, and not sort of overburden too many players, um, you know, within the squad. I mean, you've already seen that, you know, the significant injuries to other teams already and I think it's you know we've spoken about you know the, the, the calendar the players are having to bear and part of our process is to hopefully have a, a robust enough squad to, to cope with everything but also utilise that squad in the right way so that we minimise kind of the injuries that hopefully we can control some injuries you can't control but um, you know in terms of our approach we're still training as hard as we did last year we you know, trying to play the same football. Our physical numbers are, you know, as as good, if not stronger, than they were last year in games, um, which is which is our barometer. It's just that, um, like I said, we hopefully got a, a more robust squad, and you know, our, our our processes to recovery and the way we're looking after players is a little bit different. Tell you, please. Hi, Ange. Uh, many teams in the past have used this competition to rotate players to give a chance to players who maybe hadn't played that much in, uh, in the Premier League in this case. Uh, I'm not asking you if you're going to rotate too much tomorrow, but uh, do you think with the change the competition has made, this will still be possible? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think, as I said, you know, we've got a squad, we've got a squad of players that you know we, we've gone into the season thinking that we're going to potentially you know, hopefully get play 50 plus games in a year and you're not going to expect you know hardly any players to play in all those 50 games and if you can get sort of 30 35 games out of everybody so you know your European games your cup games um, are an opportunity for us to develop you know players and, and get them ready um, you know what yeah, what you don't want to do is make too many changes every game. We did that against obviously against Coventry because you know we needed to, uh, but that tends to disrupt. But this early part of the season, I think it is important that we give some game time to guys so that when we need to make changes and we will need to, it's not bringing in players who haven't played for six or eight weeks. You know they played two weeks ago, so you know if we make changes tomorrow night, the guys coming in played against Coventry a week ago. That it's not like they haven't played for four or five weeks. So I still think that. Um, you yeah, you have that opportunity in the, in the Europa. This is a chance for you to win a trophy. Uh, do you have like a preference, like the Premier League is our main competition, Europa League is second? No, I want to win everything, mate, so no preference. Okay, we'll finish with Matt down here, please. Thank you. Hello, Ange. Hey, mate. Can you, um, can you expand a little bit, please, on what, what, what it means to be in Europe, why it matters both for the club, is it about prestige, is it about money, is it about everything, but also for yourself uh, and, and the challenge that you, sort of you've taken on coming to sports? Yeah, look, I, I tend to look at it more from a sort of, uh, my old sort of, from a footballing perspective, you know, where the 
you know, I don't know, in terms of revenue, I guess it helps the club. In terms of prestige, it helps the club. Uh, but just from a footballing perspective, you know, I, like I said, it, it it's it's a different challenge from what you face um, in the Premier League, um, even in cup competitions uh, for the most part. And I think whenever you can expose, you know, individuals or a group to different environments, different challenges, I think there's, there's greater opportunity for growth. And, um, you know, whether it's, Playing against an opponent you've never played before, or play who played differently, or playing in a in a country or in a stadium with a different kind of atmosphere, all those kind of things are, are opportunities for growth, and um, I think that's what European competition um, enables you to do. I think for us, you know, I kept saying last year, I think if we had been in Europe, um, irrespective of the competition, I think. I think we would have been able to evolve a little bit quicker in terms of our, you know, what we expose our players to. Um, but you know, having sort of European competition, especially with a young group we've got, a lot of them, you know, it'll be their first time playing in this competition as a group. It's the first time for us to play in Europe. Um, the squad's changed a lot in the last uh, 12 months, so I think for all those reasons, I just see it as a fantastic opportunity to evolve. Um, for us as a, as a team, in a, in a footballing sense, um, that hopefully gets us closer to our goal. In terms of winning winning a competition, it, it feels like because you no longer get the dropouts from the Champions League, you know who's in it at the start, you know what you're up against. Does that feel like it's a something that's, I don't know if it's easier to target, but something that's um, more conceivable to target? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think... I think whenever you're in a sort of uh, this kind of competition, you, you never look kind of beyond. Well, what's the first part of it is getting out of the group, and, and then you kind of, you know, it's only sort of in the knockout stage you start sort of looking at okay, what are potential matchups? Who's left? And um, so whether that was you know last year teams dropping down or or, or this year, I mean, I, th I think we'll get a, a decent idea of where we sit on the table and likely outcomes after that. But I think it's it's only really in the knockout phase that you you kind of focus on okay. Um, you know, what sort of opposition do we have here? So I think the challenge is still the same. I don't think it makes it necessarily easier because if somehow this is easier for us, I assume it's easier for all the other teams that are really strong in this competition as well. So I don't think that changes. It's just, um, like I said, it's a unique format. It's different. Um, you know, I, I, God knows how you, you look at that table in one screenshot because it's about 37, 38, 36 teams, whatever it is. So um, you're trying to work out um, where everyone sits um, will be a challenge. But uh, I, I, like I said, for us, what we do know is we've got you know, eight really good games and an opportunity to, to progress from there. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.